Hi there, welcome to the video. We'll be doing a review of the material banner widget inside of Flutter and we'll look how to use it and when we should use it inside of our applications. So if we just scroll down on the article, which you can find inside of the description, the banner that we'll be creating is this one here at the bottom. It says your card has expired, update your credit card information, and it gives the user two buttons to press, either update or dismiss. So banner should be used, for example, when we want to display some action to the user and it's a persistent action, but give them the option to continue using the application. So unlike a snack bar, which might appear at the bottom of the screen for five, 10 seconds and then disappear, or a dialogue that would simply take up the entire view and until the user interacts with that, they can't continue using the application. The banner on the other hand is simply just something that's there, persistent and needs some action at some point in the future. So the user can elect to dismiss it and we can reshow the banner if whatever it is, is still true. Or the user can click update, perhaps perform an action, and then the banner won't appear again. So in order to see this in action, we'll create a brand new Flutter project. We'll open this up inside of our emulator and we'll play around with the banner. Before we jump in, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more Flutter content. And of course, ring that notification bell. So here we are now over at our terminal in which we'll say Flutter create, and we'll call this a banner. This will create a brand new Flutter project. And you'll see after a few seconds, it will say all done. We'll then be able to CD into banner and open this up inside of Visual Studio Code or an editor of your choice. And then when we start this on our emulator, we should see the standard counter application. We'll make a few tiny changes by turning off the debug mode checked banner. And we'll also delete this class of my homepage. And inside of our lib folder, we'll create a brand new file called home.dart. We'll say class homepage. And for now, we can simply make this a stateless widget. We'll import that from material.dart and we'll create the missing override in which we'll return a scaffold. We can then take this to our main.dart, delete the my homepage and replace it with homepage. We now have a blank canvas in which we can make an app bar on our homepage. We'll give that the title text of material banner. And inside of the body, we'll have a column. This is because we may want to have multiple things inside of the body in the future. But for now, we'll simply just have a column with a material banner. When we hit save, you'll notice that we have content cannot be null. So let's add a content. The text will say your card has expired. Update your credit card information. And when we do that, you'll see now actions cannot be null. And we can also see that it's required inside of our editor, for example, by this yellow underline. And if we hit command dot, it'll add the required argument actions, which will be of course an empty array. And the only action we'll add at this point is a flat button with the child text, which says dismiss and an unpressed of nothing. So here we have now a very basic material banner. We have your card has expired. We have the dismiss button. Of course, if we click dismiss, nothing does happen. So to make this a little more interesting, we can have some padding by adding some edge insets to this. We'll say edge insets dot all and we'll add 20 padding. So now the banner is a little bit larger. We can also change the background color of the banner by adding a background color. We'll say colors dot indigo. And when we save that, it now becomes this indigo color. But you'll notice that our text is black and maybe we want this to be a different color. So what we can do is instead of having to sort of put this text style on everything inside of the content, we just have this content text style, which we can make just at the top here as something called white text. And we'll set that to a text style where the color is colors.white. And for the content text style, we'll simply put that as white text. And when we save that, we now have this white text inside of the banner. We can also go ahead and add that to our flat button. So we'll say style is equal to white text. That will update the button's dismiss color. 
And also inside of our demo, we had this sort of icon prior to the content. And that's done with the leading. So we can add leading. Inside of the leading, we can give it an icon, icons.creditCard. And the color of which will be colors.white. When we do that, we now see that we have this leading credit card prior to the text. We still have the dismiss button. But what happens if we want to add more than one item to the actions? Let's have a look. We can copy this dismiss and we'll add instead update. And when we save, you'll notice that our actions go now underneath. We have update here and we have dismiss there. But what if we wanted to have dismiss underneath even though we only had one action? Well, let's comment our update for now. And let's add something called the force actions below equals to true. And when we add that, dismiss goes underneath by default, even though there's only one action. If we set that to false, it will of course go back to the top as this is the default for this property. The only thing left to look at at this stage is the leading padding. And this allows us to add some inset to the leading widget itself, such as adding some const edge insets dot all 10. And now you can see that we have 10 units of padding being added to that leading. We'll remove that for now because that isn't needed for our demonstration. And we'll add the update back by uncommenting it out. Next up, we'll look at how we can show or hide this banner depending on some user interaction. So we'll go ahead and add a bool called should show banner. And we'll give this an initial value of true. And inside of the build here, We'll head to our material banner and we'll say if should show banner. Now the material banner will only show if we want it to show. And what we can do is say command dot. We can extract this method and we'll call it build material banner. This just makes it a little easier to work with inside of the column. But you will also notice that we have this blue underline, which states that our dart SDK is currently not up to date in order to use this if. So what we need to do is head over to pubspec.yaml, update our environment to use the SDK of 2.30 and above. So now we have a bool, which will determine whether we show the banner or not, but we have no way to change that value. So we'll go ahead over to our homepage right here and we'll say command dot and say convert to stateful widget. That will make this a stateful widget in which we'll now have to hit the reload tab and we can scroll down to our flat button. And at this stage, we'll make it so that both buttons hit the same thing, which is to hide the banner. So we'll make a void hide banner and we'll say set state. And we'll set the state of should show banner equal to false. We can override both of the unpressed to instead be hide banner. Now, anytime the update or dismiss is called, it will dismiss the banner. Let's try that out by hitting dismiss. You can now see that the banner has disappeared. If we restart the application, we'll notice the banner comes back, hit update, we get the same thing. So that's effectively how we can use the material banner widget. We've also looked at how we can hide it depending on some user interaction. You will of course need to tailor this to your app. This is just a demonstration purpose at this stage. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like me to review another material widget or Cupertino widget, let me know inside of the comment section below what you'd like to see next.